Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we are in Matthew chapter 13. Uh, we are talking about the last two parables in the Sermon of Parables there in Matthew chapter 13. And today we're going to read verses 47 through 52. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet cast into the sea and the fish gathering fish of every kind. And when it was filled, they drew it up on the beach and they sat down and gathered the good fish into containers, but the bad they threw away. So it will be at the end of the age. The angel shall come forth and take out the wicked from among the righteous and will cast them into the furnace of fire and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood these things? They said to him, yes. He said to them, therefore, every scribe who has become a disciple of the kingdom of heaven is like a head of a household who brings forth out of his treasure things old and new. Both of these um, parables are about a, a, a variety of having a variety in discerning. They're about discernment, picking and choosing. And uh, the first parable is about judgment. And it connects us with the parable of the wheat and the tares. I mean, it's plowing the same ground um, in that we have a gathering in, everything is in, together in one bundle, and then in the end, things are sorted out. And we know who does the sorting. At the command of the Lord, the angels will do the sorting. He's already said that at the end of the parable of the tares. Um, he's describing a dragnet. They could probably see people working a dragnet at the time, or maybe they had been working them that night themselves, the night before they were listening to him preach. A dragnet, they would have had um, in the, been a large net connected to a long rope, weights on the edges, and a float in the middle. And as they cast it into the sea, it spread out, the weights would take it down and the float would keep the middle on top, it would enclose whatever was in that amount of water, and then they could take the rope and haul it back on shore. And there were fish they didn't, there were sea creatures they didn't want that were not edible or no one wanted. And they would, they would generally throw them back into the ocean, but that's not what happens here. Just in the same way that we know this isn't really about fishing. I mean, we didn't really know it was about farming because he had the Darnell uh, rye grass collected first and that's not the way it would have happened. Th you know, throwing these fish into the fire, that would not have happened. Um, so he's telling us this isn't really about fishing. This is about the end of time. And in every one of his sermons, again, he reminds us of judgment and he's reminding us of the judgment to come, not only in the parable of the wheat and tares, but in this one as well. And then in a related a parable, after they say they've understood this, he talks about the scribe, the scholar. The someone who, a scribe is not just someone who writes things down, not in their culture. A scribe is someone who, because he is a copyist, is knowledgeable, is educated in the word, and is able to uh, answer questions, is able to use it, is able to, to, um, to, to work from it in a way, to have a facility with working from the Word the way other people would not. People didn't have scrolls in their own homes, but scribes had scrolls at their disposal all the time. And so they could do the kind of Bible reading, Bible study. In fact, that was their job, to read and copy. So they were the ones who had this opportunity He's calling them scribes by extension in this parable because they're learning from him. And so they have his words in their heart, his words in their heads. And now they're equipped. They're being equipped. The word of God equips us for every good work. Second Timothy chapter three, verses 16 and 17. You've got tools. You've got treasures. You've got things that are old and things that are new. The things that you learned in Hebrew school when you were boys. All those Old Testament lessons and passages, you've got those. And you've got what I'm teaching you now. And when you need them, 
You just go into your storehouse and you pull them out. And so there is a there is a, a sorting, a discernment, a picking and choosing of the appropriate tool for the for the task, which is exactly what Jesus has done in this sermon. He went into you know his pantry and pulled out the right ingredient. In the Old Testament, there are all kinds of ways to communicate, and a parable is only one of those ways. There, 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 you know, there is Jeremiah, there's woes and blessings, you know, there, 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 there so, so many, there, there are commands and, 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 and prohibitions and exhortations and, and parables and, and cries for help. There are so many ways, so many uh, communication models in the Old Testament. But he looked into his toolbox and he pulled out parables because it was the right tool for the job, and he used it. And he's saying to his disciples, okay, if you get it, and get this. Yeah. Your, your toolbox is now filled with tools. And, you know, not everything is a nail, so you don't always use a hammer. Sometimes you use a different tool because it's the appropriate tool. And he's telling us that too, if we are someone who has read and listened to what he said and truly understands it. Okay, he's going to head home for a visit. It's not going to go well. We'll pick up with verse 33, 53, excuse me, next time. Thank you for joining me for five good minutes with the word.